All right, so this is a hypothesis that we have that I am better at speaking in more a conversational way rather than a uh, pre-recorded slash cut, cut, cut slash uh, me just going this, this, this. So what we're gonna try in this video is the same video that I just made where I was talking about four tips to level up as a developer but it is with a different video style, I guess you would say. Um, basically, I'm just practicing uh, to try to get better at this. And so this is what I call a one take wonder where we don't cut in the middle, but really cutting in the background isn't the big thing. It's more of, I have my videographer getter here who's going to be also interacting slash interjecting with like things that come to his mind because I don't know when I'm just like talking it's like sometimes I lose track sometimes I say super dumb things or my grammar gets messed up if I'm just like doing some kind of rant so anyway we're gonna try a new conversation style in this video where we're... all right let's just start let's just start the main topic of the video then of this style so we're gonna talk about four tips you can do to level up as a developer uh, I'm also gonna start with Getter. Pushing to prod. Pushing to prod? Yeah, a production. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so what I was gonna talk about there, what I was thinking is like, the first place that I did where I really went from someone who was like, I don't know, just like developing random projects slash just like learning different programming language to someone who actually knew how to build stuff was actually taking uh, a project and then like finishing it and actually deploying it. So I did that with Saffron, which is my cooking app. And I did that where I was like, I took it from the very beginning. I didn't quit after a week. I just kept continually working on it. And then I just polished it up a bunch. And then when I got to a hard place and I couldn't figure out how to do it, I didn't stop. I just like tried to figure out how to do it. And I just like rinse and repeat. Where like I'd come across an area where I didn't know how to make it in Saffron. And so then I would either watch a tutorial, I would Google it, I'd figure it out, and then I'd rinse and repeat. Um, and then I just got really good at doing that um, and was able to figure out almost anything when creating Saffron and making a production app that going through that was really helpful because now I feel like I can do that in other places where if I need to figure something out, I can usually figure that out. And then I learned a ton from just going through the entire process of not quitting after a week, but actually continuing doing it. And like taking something and like polishing it is very hard. And it's also something where you don't do it that often compared to if you just start projects over and over again, I guess. Yeah, that's pretty much all I think I was gonna say onto the production project. Can you think of anything else that I missed? Uh, it helps you learn how to maintain something or deal oh, with that's actually, bugs. Oh, that's actually good, that's actually good. That's actually something different that, uh, that that's actually a huge one. No one talks about maintaining stuff. Maintaining stuff is hard, especially in a web application, which is what like my domain of focus is. Is like when I push code, not everyone gets the update immediately, and so you have to m like make incremental versions of your app in a way that doesn't break previous versions of your application. And so, to being knowing how to do that is very important, and you only learn that if you're actually breaking code. <laughs> so you learn how to not break it. Um, all right, so we go to uh, tip number two. Yeah, which is you know pair programming or working with someone who is more knowledgeable than you. Yeah, so basically the idea is, uh, this happened to me, this happens to everyone, where either you get stuck on a problem um, or you're thinking about an architecture for something before you build it and maybe you're doing some sort of uh, a diagram or you're doing some, you're thinking through how you're gonna make it and you want to just go over it with someone else who's a better developer than you or that has more experience in that area. Uh, and that's just really going to help you figure out how are they thinking about the problem and where are you lacking. And it'll save you a lot of time. Uh, one, if you, from the perspective of if you're starting something new, going through and just showing them your plan. Hey, is this a good way to do it before actually implementing it is huge. Um, because they're going to be able to stop you from doing something that you waste your time you're going down track use a wrong library or something they can really help you speed up your time uh, and it doesn't take a lot of their time they can just look over it for a little bit and then see huh, how would i do this i would actually recommend doing that or using this library it's going to work out better for you that can save you a lot of time 
Also, if you run into a bug, get their help with debugging. Um, that can save you so much time. They're going to be able to spot things faster. You're going to be able to learn how to debug through pair programming with them. Um, so find someone at work um, that is more experienced than you are and just pick their brain um, and get their help with debugging things. Uh, the other thing is if you're if you're not at work or you're just learning programming on your own, Twitter, Stack Overflow is going to be your best friend. Post there, ask questions. It's going to help a lot. Yeah, that's pretty much tip two. Let's go to tip three. Uh, what was tip three? Well, you just talked about <laughs> receiving help or receiving mentorship or working oh, yeah, with someone teaching, more knowledgeable. Teaching, right. You can reverse the roles. Okay, yeah. So, so we talked about pair programming and working with someone who's better than you. Um, and basically, you can be that person for someone else or just in general, taking something you've learned uh, and teaching that. So I actually thought teaching used to be, or teachers used to be, uh, people that didn't actually know how to do the craft. That's why they taught instead of doing the craft. But then I became a teacher, which was kind of awkward, uh, and I learned that that's not really exactly the case. Uh, you actually master the subject better uh, if you teach it. So me actually teaching stuff on YouTube has been immensely useful, and like I feel like I've taken my understanding to the next level doing that. Um, that I would really recommend you guys doing that in some medium. It doesn't have to be through YouTube. It can either be through something like somebody at work you go and you're teaching them how to build a particular feature out uh, or it can be in the perspective of you're writing a blog post making a YouTube video doing a podcast but just showing someone how to do how to do something and like writing down your thought process of how to do something and formalizing that will really help you master a subject uh, and take your understanding really to the next level um, so yeah that's teaching uh, tip four now Answering questions on Stack Overflow? Yeah, so this is kind of similar, um, but it's basically answering questions on Stack Overflow or some medium where you're answering people's programming questions. So like for me, I do it on my YouTube channel, answer comments, uh, also on my Discord channel where uh, I'm just answering people's stuff. Now this one's really interesting because you see a lot of different perspectives and you see a lot of different uh, ways people think about problems and it helps your debugging skills a ton. So being able to quickly analyze a piece of code someone sent you uh, and be able to figure out what's wrong with it, that's a skill that I've developed just by uh, answering a lot of questions and you see a lot of different things um, and you learn about new ways to actually do things. When someone sends me a piece of code or asks me a question about how to do something, they're thinking about it through their lens um, so I see how they're doing it and I'm like, wow, that's really interesting. Why am I not doing it like that? Or uh, where are they stuck? How can I make that easier? So it gives me a lot of ideas. Um, and I feel like it's crucial to being able to also teach well is to answer those type of questions and see where people are getting stuck. Um, and as a developer, you're gonna be able to identify these situations where you're answering questions where other people are getting stuck in and you can help them out. And also you're gonna notice when you're coding, you might run into a problem someone else has already run into um, that you've seen and you can immediately fix it. So that's super nice. So, and I think that's all the tips that we went through and like basically all of them in general is where I really felt like, I feel like there's this weird limbo state that you get as a developer where you like, you learn the syntax of a language and then you're like, all right, I know how to program in Java or something. What do I do next? Um, how do I take my skills to the next level? And so that's those were the things that I did. Those four things I did, and that's really where I saw giant gains in going from just kind of an intermediate developer to a more advanced, and like uh, really take my developer skills up a notch.